In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. We thank our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for another Bible Preach session and another um, blessed evening this Friday, 7 p.m., all the way from Sydney, Australia. For those who are with us here in the church and those who are watching us through live streaming, I pray that you are always in good health and in good spirit. Amen. Uh, if I could ask everyone to stand for the Lord's Prayer, please. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgave our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Psalm number 60. O God, you have cast us off. You have broken us down. You have been displeased. O restore us again. You have made the earth tremble. You have broken it. Heal its breaches, for it is shaking. You have shown your people hard things. You have made us drink the wine of confusion. You have given a banner to those who fear you, that it may be displayed because of the truth, that your beloved may be delivered. Save with your right hand and hear me. God has spoken in his holiness. I will rejoice. I will divide Shechem and measure out the valley of Sakuth. Gilead is mine and Manasseh is mine. Ephraim also is, is the helmet for my head. Judah is my lawgiver. Moab is my washpot. Over Edom I will cast my shoe. Philistia Shout in triumph because of me. Who will bring me to the strong city? Who will lead me to Edom? Is it not you, O God, who cast us off? And you, O God, who did not go out with our armies? Give us help from trouble, for the help of man is useless. Through God we will do valiantly, for it is he who shall Tread down our enemies, and all glory be to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A very good evening to all of you. How are we? Good? Are you sure? Are you good? Are you sure? Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Well, this evening we are continuing with our commentary on the book of Revelation. We've had a couple of weeks off due to the festive season of our beloved, the one and only, the sweetheart of all sweethearts, the crown of glory, the savior and the redeemer of the world in celebrating his mighty resurrection from the dead. The tomb is empty and it's crying out and has been for over 2,000 years with the holy fire vividly uh, so clear and so powerfully to say that the tomb is empty, Christ is truly risen. So um, we've had those couple of weeks off and we thank the Lord we are back this evening. Also for those who attend the Bible course on Tuesdays fortnightly, my sincere apologies for last Tuesday's cancellation. It was due to, I'll be very frank with you, uh, my own earthly mother is, uh, is actually a little bit ill and uh, she needs uh, a lot of attention. So that's why I was not able to attend uh, last Tuesday for the Bible course. Please do keep my earthly mother in your prayers if you don't mind. Okay, we're going to be... Um, we're going to be reading from the book of Revelation, chapter 6, verses 9 to 17, inclusive. And that is the end of chapter 6. So with the Lord's grace, we'll be, hopefully we'll be able to finish 
chapter 6 this uh, blessed evening. So, Revelation chapter 6, verses 9 to 17. When he opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of those who had been slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, until you judge and avenge our blood on those who dwell on the earth? Then a white robe was given to each of them, and it was said to them that they should rest a little while longer until both the number of their fellow servants and their brethren who would be killed as they were was completed. I looked, then he opened the sixth seal, and behold, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became like blood, and the stars of heaven fell to the earth, as a fig tree drops its late figs when it is shaken by a mighty wind. Then the sky record, uh, receded as a scroll when it is rolled up, and every mountain and island was moved out of its place. And the kings of the earth, the great men, the rich men, the commanders, the mighty men, every slave and every free man hid themselves in the caves and in the rocks of the mountains and said to the mountains and rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb for the great day of his wrath has come, and who is able to stand? And all glory be to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, forever and ever. Amen. Well, very interesting um, words from this particular part of chapter 6, six of Revelation. Just to have a, a, a very short uh, intro um, to link what we have been talking about the seals so that way we can continue with, uh, with the seals of today, which is seal 5 and seal 6. In previous sessions, we said they are seven seals, and each seal goes hand in hand with the seven stages of the beloved and only church of Jesus Christ. We saw seal 1 when it was opened, there was the white horse, Seal two, a red horse. Seal three, a black horse. Seal four, a pale green horse. And now, today is seal five and six. And we said, seal one, the white horse, represents the Lord Jesus. He, it was him who was sitting on the white horse. And we said, white represents peace. And peace is the Lord Making. He came to this earth to bring peace, and he did that in those 33 years and four months that he spent on the face of this earth until he was crucified and then rose from the dead. For those 33 years, peace was brought to earth. And let us not forget um, that when Jesus was born in Bethlehem, the angels of heaven cried out and said, Glory to God in the highest and peace on earth. That's the white horse. Before I continue further, our beloved daughter in Christ, Nora, is with us. You're going to be singing two hymns at the end, my beloved. Okay? So you'll be hearing her angelic voice this very evening. She was supposed to sing one at the beginning, I'm getting old, my dear daughter. Please forgive me. Now, so, the white horse, Christ bringing peace on this whole globe, on this earth. And that was the first 33 years. From the time Jesus rose from the dead, all glory to his holy name, and went up to heaven and sat at the right hand of the Father, until 325 AD, the second seal was opened, and that was the red horse. Red horse represents blood martyrdom. Martyrdoms began on the Christian people for over 300 years through the Roman empires, people like or emperors like Neron and Diocletian and the likes. They started killing 
persecuting everyone who professed and confessed Jesus Christ to be Lord and Savior. That was the red horse from 33 AD all the way to 325 AD of 300 years almost of martyrdom. Followed by the third seal, the black one. 325, the Roman Empire under the rulership of um, Constantine the Emperor for the first time in its history it accepts Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and converts from paganism into into the Christendom or the Christian world became a Christian Empire when the Roman Empire converted to Christianity the third seal was opened and that third seal continued from 325 to 635 more or less so again another 300 years of the third seal which was the black horse and the black horse we said it spoke of heresies when the Roman Empire became Christian the church united with the government the church became free no more persecutions no more restrictions no more social distancing <laughs> no more lockdowns therefore it became free and the moment the human being becomes free veers of the road veers of the road heresies came started with Arius where he said Jesus Christ was created by God and through him created the whole world and the uh, Arians you know heresy we see it till this very day alive called Jehovah's Witnesses this is the Aryan movement still going on and then the fourth seal was opened we saw the pale horse pale green and that came around 635 AD and that was the birth of Islam is the pale horse the birth of Islam and to refresh your memory for every seal and I saw the living creature the first living creature said come and see and then the second seal the second living creature said to me come and see and the third seal was open and then the third living creature and the fourth seal and the fourth living creature said to John the beloved come and see and each living creature was relevant to that specific seal to that specific seal and we said those living creatures the four are symbolic to the of the um, Gospels Matthew Mark Luke and John the pale horse Islam it was the fourth living creature which is the Gospel of John now Islam came which can we can refer to it as the Antichrist why because Islam accepts Jesus as a prophet only but denies totally his deity that he is God he is the son of God and he was crucified denies all of these Jesus was never crucified he cannot be the son of God that is a blasphemy for God to have a son because they think earthly thinking and definitely he cannot be God for God is so exalted he is so holy and high up there how can he be a human dragged in the streets of Jerusalem and nailed on the cross fully naked so they deny the crucifixion of Jesus the the sonship of Jesus and the divinity of Jesus Christ that where Islam was born 635 and that is the pale horse and we said green in its fullness and richness represents life but a pale green is a false replica of the true green so the true green represents life therefore the pale green represents death and that's why when you read the one who sat on the pale green was death itself so now 635 Islam came denied the divinity of Jesus Christ we have one point four billion Muslims who do not believe that Jesus is the one and only it's a problem 
But we pray one day every human being comes to this realization before it's too late. Now the fifth seal. Another thing. <laughs> we said seven seals, six of them are for earth. One is in heaven. And the one is in heaven is the fifth seal which we're about to actually talk and have a commentary on. So the fifth seal is in heaven, not on earth. Let's read verse 9. When he opened the fifth seal, who opened the fifth seal? The Lamb of God, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, all glory to his holy name. When he opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of those who had been slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. We don't see any more living creatures saying to John, come and see. John is saying, I saw this time. I do not need any more any living creatures to come and tell me, come and see. I saw myself directly without anyone's interference. And what did he see, John the Beloved? He saw the souls that were martyred, who had been slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. He saw the martyrs under the altar. Now why is the fifth seal in heaven? Because after the white horse, the first seal, after the white horse, after 33 AD, and until the fifth seal is opened, Christianity or Christians went through extreme, extreme measures of persecutions. For centuries, 300 years under the Roman Empire, another followed by another 300 years, that was the red horse, the Roman Empire, followed by another 300 years of heresies, false teachings, teachings that are non-biblical, non-apostolic, teachings that have, you know, changed what Jesus had already said, taught, and gave to the church. So you look at 600 years, and after the 600 years, heresies, the black horse, came the pale horse, Islam, where they denied the divinity of Jesus Christ. They said he was never crucified, he cannot be the son of God, he is definitely not God. Forget about Christianity, it is fake. So you could imagine centuries upon centuries of being slain, killed, imprisoned, stoned, you name it, all kind of persecutions for centuries on end came upon Christendom, the Christian world. They needed to be comforted. They needed to be restored once again in their true faith. You know, imagine with me for a moment, you talk to someone all the time in a negative way. What do you think is gonna happen to that someone? You're gonna destroy them. Every time they come and say to you, good morning, you say, what for? Every time you talk, you make it pitch black. There is no point to work. There is no point to go and come. Thanks to Bill Gates and the likes, it is the end, baby. 2030, you're not going to own nothing and you'll live happy thanks to Mr. Hitler number two, Klaus Schwab, and the World Economic Forum, right? So what's the point? of me working hard and building a house. What's the point of me working? Let Centerlink do the job, baby. No point. So the future is dull. The future is grim. Everything is dark. Everything is ugly. You continue talking negatively to someone, you will destroy them. They will hate their life and they'll probably end up hanging themselves by the neck. Christians went through so many persecutions. They needed to be comforted. 
the Lord Jesus said, Jono, my beautiful disciple, come. I'll show you what happened to those who were persecuted under the Roman Empire, those who were persecuted through heresy, those who were persecuted by the Islamic faith. I'll show you where they are. Because you've been wondering, why, Lord, are you allowing all this to come upon those who truly love you and want to follow you? Why? Why are you let, letting Satan, why are you letting the world to hurt your own beloved church? He said, come, John, I'll show you where they are. And the fifth seal was opened by the Lamb of God, and I saw the souls of those who were slain for the word of God and the testimony which they held under the altar. That is the altar. The altar represents the cross. The cross is the altar. Because altar, my beloved, in the Aramaic language or the Syriac language, we refer to it as madhbha or madhbho or madhbha, depending on the you know dialect that you speak, the accent you speak. So madhbha in Aramaic Syriac literally means a place where you slain something on. In Arabic, which Arabic is another Semitic language, and it's taken from the Syriac language, they call it madhbah. Madhbah comes from the word dhabiha. Dhabiha means sacrifice. So madhbha, alta, means a place where something is being sacrificed, slain. I saw those souls under the altar. These souls were slain for two things, for keeping the word of God and for holding up the testimony of the truth. For keeping the word of God, they were slain under the Roman Empire. Under the Roman Empire, under heresies, under Islam. Everyone who professed Jesus Christ to be Lord and God, he is the Son of God, he is my Lord, he is my Creator, he is my Savior, he is my Redeemer, they were slain under the Roman Empire. And those who testified to the truth against heresies, heretical teachings, they were also slain. And those who never denied the deity of Jesus Christ under Islam, they were also slain. But I saw them living under the altar, under the wings of Christ, under the shadow of the lustrous cross. I saw them alive. I thought that when these Christian people went through immense torture and then killed at the end, I thought they were lost. But I, John, one of the 12 apostles, today I say to everyone, nothing is lost when Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. Nothing is lost. Nothing. They may hurt you, they may persecute you, and they may kill you, but I, Jesus Christ, I am the Savior. I am the Redeemer. I am the one who was slain on the cross, but I was buried and then I rose from the dead and I crushed death under my foot. And I rose from the dead triumphantly forever. When you have me as your Lord and God, then you will be triumphant the way your Jesus was and is and will always be. So you, got, you are under the altar and they were asking the Lamb of God until when are you not going to avenge for our blood from the people on earth? Until when? Why aren't you avenging our own blood? 
But we see something here very beautiful as far as love is concerned. Where did John the Beloved see these souls? Under the altar. And who is on above the altar? Jesus Christ himself. This is the true love the Lord is saying. I, Jesus Christ, I was slain on the altar for your sake and you are slain under the altar for your Jesus sake this is true love it is a two-way street just like I gave my life for you if you truly love me then you should give your life for me the way I did for you and this is true martyrdom where Christians were running for the sword for the sake of their beloved Jesus for the sake of their beloved Jesus to say to him one thing we today we are giving that love back to you Lord the way you died for us today we are choosing freely to die for you this is true love how far are you willing to sacrifice for your Lord how far are you willing these people went to the ultimate price they gave their life for their Messiah now another thing John the beloved saw this in heaven seal number five is in heaven those who were killed they died here it shows you absolutely clearly that those who have died and moved on are not dead they are living and they are praying in fact to the Lord Jesus to avenge their blood from the people living on earth so when somebody departs from this world and goes to paradise they are not dead they are not detached at all they are actually praying and asking the Lord to avenge their blood on those who dwell on the earth now why are they saying Lord avenge our blood from those who live on the earth Christianity is one word L O V E it's love the Lord Jesus said pray for those who persecute you and bless those who are against you Christianity is not built on revenge so you come and hurt me I'll go and hurt you you kill one of my people I'll go and kill one of your people that is not Christianity my beloved that is the law of physics and that is the law of the Old Testament which two groups of people till this very day follow the law of the Old Testament which is the law of physics as well an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth it is Judaism and Islamism these are the two groups they follow this law until this very day you hurt me I hurt you you love me I love you you hate me I hate you this is only fair this law is for this world only it cannot be for the next world for the next world love your enemy pray for those who hate you and persecute you when are you gonna be as perfect as your heavenly daddy who brings his rain on the good and on the bad who shines his Sun on the righteous and on the wicked when are you gonna be like your Heavenly Father you cannot live on earth forever in order to walk by this earthly law you need to elevate yourself and become heavenly when are you going to avenge our blood from those people who live on earth what they are literally saying to the Lord Jesus they're saying Lord we were killed by the people on earth because Satan moved them and made them against us see when when a person becomes your enemy don't hate them please no matter what happens don't ever hate them you know why because the one behind that person 
who now became your enemy is Satan. Satan tried with you, didn't win. So what is he going to try now to do? He's going to hurt you through people around you. So he's going to turn them against you. All of a sudden, they were one day your friend, the next, they are your enemy against you. So it is Satan who brought all these people and made them like vicious wolves and started slaying all these Christians who are followers of Jesus Christ. These martyrs who are living, praying, and asking and interceding, asking the Lord to avenge their blood from the people on earth. What they are really asking, they are saying, Lord, just like we glorified your name on earth while we were on earth, because they put the sword on our neck and they said, deny Jesus Christ. We said, we will never deny his holy name. Even if you behead me, I will never walk away from Jesus. Just like we glorified you, Lord. We are be begging you. We are besieging you. We are interceding that everyone on earth who was the reason for our martyrdom, we ask you, Lord, through that blood that we shed for your name's sake, make them all martyrs and let them all be saints, not sinners. This is the revenge that we want you to take and make for us. Turn them into saints. Those people who were moved by Satan, convert them, Lord, bring them to you and put Satan to shame. I am praying from the bottom of my heart for every human being that is being controlled, moved, and deceived by Satan. Lord, for the sake of every blood that was shed on the face of this earth for your name's sake, and above all, by your precious blood that you shed on Calvary, Lord, touch these people's hearts, open their minds, their hearts and souls for them to realize they are deceived by Satan and see where the light, where the truth is. Come and embrace you, Lord, to be set free and be brought back to your household and to your fold, Lord. I pray for those people who are plotting evil on earth, for everyone who has gone into those dark alleys and dark places, planning things in secret places, to destroy humanity, I pray they are to be the first people to be converted and become Christians for your name's sake, my Lord. I pray for that. I pray for someone called Mr. Harari, where he thinks iCloud is his God. I pray that he comes back to his senses. And there are a lot of people like him. I pray they come back to their senses and realize there is one true divine God, the creator of you, me, everyone, and everything that is visible and invisible. And this God, to make it short and nice for you and easy, his name is Jesus Christ. Stop wasting your breath and time reading the Torah reading here and there I'll tell you his name is Jesus Christ and you're gonna face him one day my dear friend all of us we will face him everyone will face Jesus there is no one else because he is it he is it he is the one and only the only stop don't expect any other God to come to your rescue don't expect any other prophet to come to your rescue. Only Jesus is your only hope. Come to him before it is too late, my dear friend. My dear friend. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true. Holy, you can never change. Your word is forever. You never change your mind because you're holy. Even if you want to change your mind, you cannot because your nature is holy. 
What is inside of you is exactly what is outside of you. Unlike us, what is inside of us a lot of times is not what is outside of us. I may not like a person, but when I see them, I say, oh, I love you. <laughs> Be honest. I say, I don't like you. I'll say it in your face, my dear friend. But we are not God. That's why we are not holy as he is. Holy and true until you judge and avenge our blood on those who dwell on the earth. Those who killed us, Lord, change them and make him saints. We are praying for everyone to be a martyr, for everyone to come under your altar, under your wings, under your shadow, Lord Jesus. We want the whole world to be converted and end up in heaven. Don't let, Lord Jesus, no soul to be lost and gone to hell. Make Satan Put him to shame, Lord. Put him to shame. We pray for everyone. But when the time comes to speak the truth, it must be spoken. But we pray for everyone. Because our Lord Jesus always taught us to love everyone and pray for everyone. But at the same time, he said, speak the truth, even if it meant the sword to be put on your neck, speak the truth. Speak the truth. Then, verse 11, then a white robe was given to each of them, and it was said to them, then a white robe was given to each of them. What is the Lord saying here? The white robe is Jesus Christ himself. He rose from the dead, and that glorified body, white. White is the dress of righteousness. White is the dress of the kingdom of God. White is to be likened unto Christ. You are Christ-like, as John the Beloved says in his epistle. He says, we do not know what to expect in the next life, but there is one thing for sure. We will be Christ-like. So this white robe is Christ himself. What Jesus our Lord is saying, those who are loyal and faithful to me uh, till the end, those who have given their life for me till the very end, I will give myself to them in the end. I'm not going to give you my kingdom. I'm not going to give you any precious gift. I'll give you myself. God will give himself to you. There is no greater gift than God giving himself to you as a gift. So a white robe was given to them, meaning Christ gave his, himself to them at the end. And it was said to them, <laughs> now this is interesting, and it was said to them that they should rest a little longer until both the number of their fellow servants and their brethren who would be killed as they were was completed. I don't want to scare you. <laughs> what the Lord Jesus is saying to his beloved church, just like there was martyrdom in the beginning of my church in the New Testament, there will be martyrdom in the end of the journey of my church in the New Testament. My church in the New Testament became, began with martyrdom. It's, she will end her journey on earth with martyrdom. Rest for now. Relax until the number is complete. God, Jesus Christ, has a number in his head of how many people need to be slain again for his name's sake in the end of times. There will be a lot of martyrdom happening in the 21st century. Am I scaring you? I hope not. The church will go through immense persecution. Now, those who are true and loyal to Jesus Christ, not every Christian is a Christian. You could be a Christian by name, but not by deed. 
You could be a Christian with a lip service, not from the heart. Those who are from the lips, no, they would have sold Jesus Christ long time ago. Yes, by name they are Christians, but by deeds, Christ will say, I don't know who you are, O evildoers, away with you. Go to hell that was prepared for Satan and his angels. I don't know who you are. But those who love the Lord and stand for his name's sake until the very end, they will face martyrdom in the 21st century, the end of times. Until the number is complete, the Lord has a figure in his head. And that, until that number is complete, then he will come and teach these people a lesson. Now, one might question this and say, why all this? Couldn't it have been done in a different way? Couldn't God do it like, he, like in a different way? He's God. He could do things a lot easier than this. Now that's another topic. <laughs> it comes back to one thing. And that is love. That's the problem. The whole problem is love. If love wasn't there, well, there wouldn't have been anything. The moment you love, you begin to feel pain. The moment you begin to love, you begin to feel pain. But I ask you this, can you live without love? You'll say, no. Everybody loves. Even the thief loves robbing people's houses. Even the drug dealer loves selling drugs to people and destroy their lives, but he loves it. And some love singing, some love dancing, some love being bishops. Some love preaching, some love whatever, but everybody loves. But the ultimate love is the divine love when you have an encounter with. That is the ultimate. When you encounter this divine love, everything and anything that is outside of this divine love is meaningless. In fact, then and then only you will realize that every other love that I had in my life, it was because of this divine love. If it wasn't for this divine love, I wouldn't have loved Sarah. Sarah wouldn't have loved me. I wouldn't have loved my father, my mother, and vice versa. I wouldn't have loved no one, including myself. I was, wouldn't have been able to love my own self if it wasn't for God's love that created me and brought me into existence. Love equals sacrifice. Love equals pain. So if you think when you enter a love relationship, if you think you come with this mentality that when I love someone and I am engaging my life with someone else's life, it is fun, it is beautiful, it is, you know, cruising down the highway, it is honeymoon all the way to the bank. You're mistaken. You have misunderstood the true meaning of true love. True love, the moment you enter it, it is sacrificial love based on sacrifice because love is the reason behind life but for life to continue there has to be a sacrifice it is impossible for life to continue without a sacrifice and i'll give you a very simple simple example you walk by an apple tree and you see this beautiful apple hanging in that tree. You plug it of that tree. When you plug that apple from the tree, what happened to the apple? You've detached it from the tree. 
it is now you've killed it it's dead and you ate the apple as they say this simple saying in English an apple a day keeps the doctor away right so you ate that apple what happened you ate it the apple is dead inside of you the apple died I lived the apple was sacrificed for me to continue living if you notice everything around us somebody dies for the one for someone else, or someone else to live something dies for something else to continue living everything is based on this formula I buy food that food once upon a time was a plant we plugged it we killed it for us to live everything is a sacrifice for life to continue but for life to exist love made it possible but for life to continue sacrifice made it possible the Lord Jesus says I love you and because I love you I gave you life but for you to continue in this life through my love I had to die you want to continue in my love you need to sacrifice if you want to continue living in my love martyrdom will take place in the end times of the beloved church by the way we've we've noticed we've noticed martyrdom happening uh, not not very long ago and until now I come from Iraq Middle East I was born there I was very young when we migrated to this beautiful country Australia <clears throat> I can only tell you in recent very recent history in 1980 a war began between Iraq and the neighboring country Iran Iran are the Persians you know the Persians and the Medes Empire the Persians so the war began in 1980 since from 1980 till today Iraq never ever had one day of peace millions millions of people were killed through the Iraq Iran war then followed by the Gulf then followed by sanctions then followed by America going into Iraq um, on the basis of having um, weapons of mass destruction which was the biggest lie created by George Bush and his family biggest liar thanks mr. George Bush keep on lying on the basis of that they slain people millions there was a statistic I'm not sure if it's accurate but I don't think it is lesser it can be more that 40,000 children die from starvation in Iraq every single year not including the millions that were killed and the millions that were driven by force out of their homeland Syria if you haven't seen these countries I pray one day you do they are blessed the Lord Jesus walked on the land of Syria because at the time of the Lord Jesus the borders were not like now between Israel Syria and Lebanon the Lord walked on the land of Lebanon and he walked on the land of Syria as well and Saint Paul is from Syria yeah his Jew He's a Jewish through his lineage family tree but he was raised born and raised in Syria they destroyed Syria for what for their greed they killed a lot of people I'll tell you a true story and I I don't want to keep you for too long but I, I, I'm very tempted you know Um, one day um, I was walking in Fairfield I was a priest not a bishop I was a priest I was walking in Fairfield and then I just heard um, <clears throat> footsteps behind me I turn around and this man was walking behind me and I stopped and I looked at him from a distance he was staring right straight at, straight at me 
So I, I assumed he meant to speak with me. So I waited. He approached me. He said, uh, you're a father, aren't you? I said, yes, my dear. What can I do for you? He said, Father, I am from Iraq. I've just arrived to this country the last couple of months. I'm a total stranger. I don't speak English. I don't know nothing about this country. Um, Father, you may know, you may, you may have noticed on my face, I am mentally slightly disturbed. I'm, I'm okay, but I'm very tired up here. I said, why, my dear friend? He said, Father, I just need $20 if you can. There is some medication I need to buy. I only have these couple of dollars in my pocket. I don't have any money. It is me and my wife only here. And I don't know why I came to Australia. I don't need any country. I don't need to live anymore. I don't want to live, Father. I said, why? He said, Father, have you heard of the church in Iraq called Sayyidat al-Najat? Sayyidat al-Najat, that's an Arabic word for our Holy Mother Mary. So the church was named after the Holy Mother. He said, I was there in the church attending Sunday Mass, Holy Mass service with my only son, 16-year-old, with my only son. He said, I was there in the church and all of a sudden people started screaming and shouting, ISIS is coming. And he said, everybody started running out of the church frantically. Everyone trying to save their lives. He said, I ran, my son ran with me, I saw him running with me. And then as we came out of the church, we started running. I thought that my son was running right beside me. After a few seconds, I turn around, my son is not with me. I stop about 30 meters or so away from the church's door, main door. I see my only son, father, 16 year old, standing like a statue in front of the church's door. Out of fear, he froze. He couldn't run. He was so scared. He said two four-wheel drive cars stopped and with, with, with camouflage, a guy comes out with a gun in his hand. And in my heart, I am saying, Lord, please don't let this happen. Please, Lord, I couldn't talk anymore. I couldn't think of anything anymore. I froze at that moment that I wish it was a dream. It was a nightmare and I could wake up from it, realizing it was just a dream or a nightmare. But I was still in the subconscious mind of mine. I'm thinking this is reality, but I don't want it to be reality. So I begged the Lord. It was the heart talking because the mind, the lips stopped. They seized. Lord, please, please don't make it happen. Please, Lord, don't let this happen. And I saw the guy walking, 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 walking. He put six bullets in my son's head. Six bullets. Why? Because some Freemason lied to his own American people and to the whole world. The whole world is based on, on lies because the world is placed in the bosom of Satan. The father of all lies said that Iraq has weapons of mass destruction. <laughs> George Bush and the likes of you you can lie to your American people and you can lie to the world, but to an Iraqi person you cannot because I know who you are and what you are. Shame on you. And shame on every president and, 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 and leader to be like having your mentality. Shame on such evildoers. Shame on you. What are you going to say, my dear friend? One day you're gonna die and you're gonna face I'll remind you George Bush I'll remind you when you put your name for the presidency and you were campaigning That person asked you who is your you know your idol? Who do you look up to you said Jesus Christ? 
Don't ever say that name again on your lips. Don't ever. Because you are a liar. If Jesus Christ was truly your Lord and God, you wouldn't have done this evil deed. You wouldn't have. Because Jesus did not come to kill people. Jesus came to give life to people. But this is the world. This guy was a Christian, is a Christian. He said, Father, what do I do with Australia? I only had one person, one son. They killed him right before my eyes, Father. I'm troubled up here, Father. Please tell me, what shall I do? What can you say? You become speechless. Christians have been martyred everywhere. Syria, Egypt. Do they talk about it? <laughs> In Egypt, I'm sure there is not a day that goes by unless there is one Christian being persecuted or killed. Just because the country hasn't been invaded by a foreign country, uh, this is domestic, you know, family violence. Family violence. Well, the pale horse came, <laughs> trying to imitate the true color green. Listen, Muhammad, you're pale, brother, right? You're dead. But the one I worship is the living God revealed in the flesh. It's the living God. I've got a question mark about the Islamic faith. But I love the Muslims. And I always pray for them. But I've got humongous question marks on the Islamic faith. You know, we read Arabic, you see. <laughs> yeah. So you can translate whatever you want, but I can read the, uh, the original one. So you can't just uh, skip. But martyrdom will continue happening in the 21st century. Um, and also, my beloved, a martyr is not just in the literal sense where you get killed for the, the Lord's sake. You can be a martyr in a different way. You've You've sacrificed your time and you came to church. That is martyrdom. You could have been somewhere else, enjoying this moment somewhere else. But you chose to come to church. You've sacrificed that time for the Lord. That is martyrdom. You love something and you want to have it always, but you stopped yourself from having that thing that you love the most. That is martyrdom. I want to have a mansion, but no, I've changed my mind. I can live in a little tiny you know, one bedroom studio. I don't need a mansion as long as I am with the Lord Jesus. It all depends. What are you willing to sacrifice for the Lord's sake? How far are, can you go? How long can you last sacrificing for the Lord? But we can be martyrs in so many different ways. Kill your ego. Be a martyr and lower yourself. Be humble down to earth. Stop saying, I'm right. Say to the person before you, sorry, my dear friend, you're right. I'm wrong this time. That is martyrdom. That is martyrdom as well. Anyway, don't want you to stay here all night. The sixth seal. I looked when he opened the sixth seal, and behold, there was a great earthquake and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became like blood. The sixth seal talks about communism, atheism. 
communism and atheism. Atheists came on board when the sixth seal was open and communism came. My beloved, uh, what, what, what the Communist Party did in Russia in the 20th century, that is not that long ago. 70 years, the church, the wonderful, wonderful Russian Orthodox Church, so rich, so rich in her rituals, so rich in her services, and she is beautiful. But the church was persecuted by the Communist Party when came to Russia, 70 years, Christians were slain by Lenin and Stalin, the sick and the head people. They killed their own people in the millions. Between Lenin and Stalin, you could look around 30 to 40 million people were slain. Thirty to forty million. Seventy years of persecution. Communism is the sixth seal. When it was opened, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black, a sackcloth, and the moon became like blood. To cut it short. The founder of communism, Karl Marx, the genius, atheist. Karl Marx is the founder of communism. You know why communism also started? The church had a role also in it. See, Karl Marx came, um, he was actually taught by a saint. The name just slipped my mind. Um, Hegan, Hegan. This man was a saint. He taught Karl Marx good Christian values. And as Karl Marx grew, he looked at the church and he looked at the church leaders. The onion domes, gold, marble, expensive, so high into the sky. All these churches. The church leaders dressed up in linen and in gold, in limousines, and, ro and rolling the red carpet. And he looked at the people, the followers, the faithful, starving in the streets, starving. He said his famous statement that went into history, Karl Marx. He said, our father who art in heaven, stay there. <laughs> our father, who art in heaven, stay there. You are God in heaven and I am God on earth. You have nothing to do with this earth and I will not let you to interfere with this earth. I'll be God on earth. And I will teach these Christians of yours that dress up in, in gold and linen and drive limousines and Lamborghinis and yet their people are starving. This is not the Christ that I came to know did when he was on earth. Therefore, your Christ that you believe in, you can have him. I'll be my own God on earth. When they used to put the Christian, Russian Christian people in prisons, these you know, communist people would come just to make fun of them. They would line them up and say, okay, pray to your God right now and say, God, Jesus, give me bread. Let me see if your God is gonna give you bread. But if you pray to me, I'll give you bread. I'll give you bread straight away. The church was persecuted for 70 years. The sun became black as sackcloth of hair and the moon became like blood. Well, the sun and the moon. Who is the sun? Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. You read in Malachi chapter 4 verse 2. Uh, Christ is the son of righteousness, S-U-N. He is the son of righteousness and healings in its wings. And the Lord Jesus himself in John 8, 12 says, I am the light of the world. So who is the son? Jesus Christ. The divinity of Christ is the sun and the humanity of Christ is the moon. So the sun became black 
a sackcloth of hair. So it was covered. The sun was covered. The divinity of Christ was covered. And the moon, the humanity of Christ, became like blood. So the moon is the body, is the body of Christ. And who is the body of Christ? The church. We are the body of Christ. So we are the moon, but the moon became what? Blood. When the sun is covered in black, you cannot see the sun anymore. What happens to the body of Christ, the church, the moon becomes blood. What becomes blood? When I suffocate someone, you see their face turns blood. And when you suffocate a person, they turn red blood. And what happens to them afterwards? They die. When Christ is denied, the body is dead. The church, the moon turns blood, suffocated, and then eventually dies. Communism, atheism, deny the existence of God. The sun, the divine, is hidden. The church is suffocating. I'll ask you this. Do you feel suffocated? No? <laughs> what happened through, through lockdown? Where was the church through lockdown? Didn't you feel suffocated? Where was the church during lockdown? Ah. We haven't got rid of communism yet. China, the greatest communist party, baby. Australia is warning China and Russia. Uh, you better behave, okay? Otherwise, we're coming at you with our uh, expired F-16. Before a pass of Sydney, the engine failure happens, and then the guy has to parachute. China is a communist party. Um, they have a great symbol, a dragon. <laughs> what is the dragon in the Holy Bible? The enemy. These empires are all driven by Satan. The Chinese or any communist party, they don't give one penny about their people. They will slay anyone even if they don't, even if they, have, if they haven't done nothing. Just because I don't like your looks, so get rid of them. When Christ is denied, the church is suffocated and eventually you will die. But look what happened. Verse 13. Because the sun was covered in black, denial of the divinity of Christ, the church now has become blood, suffocated. Verse 13. And the stars of heaven fell on the earth as a fig tree drops its late figs when it is shaken by a mighty wind. Amazing how the Holy Bible talks. And the what? And the stars of heaven fell to the earth. Some people thought that the literal stars that you see in heaven are going to fall. Well, they can't fall on earth, my dear friend. Do you know how, how far each star is away from the earth? And do you know how big they are? They're not going to fall on the earth. But the stars here are the church leaders. Why? Because in the very beginning of the book of Revelation, and right to what? The, there are seven stars, and the stars are the angels of the seven churches in Asia. So the stars are the church leaders. When you deny the divinity of Christ, the church is going to be suffocated, and the church leaders will fall onto the earth. They will fall from heaven because they were appointed by their heavenly father. They were given a heavenly position, but because they denied the divinity of Christ, 
then they fell on earth they became like the rest of the world sold Jesus sold him that's why the church was quiet during the pandemic. amazing amazing you know the Lord said you need to read the signs of the time the Lord has been crying from the cross Calvary for the past 2,000 years just unite 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 no one is giving ear to the cry of Christ Satan came with his pandemic all ch church leaders united got the job brother by getting the job you are showing an act of love for your neighbor oh there was a show on TV called neighbor here I don't know if it's still going on or not I'm not sure neighbors da, da, da. <laughs> so church leaders the Lord has been crying out for 2,000 years unite 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 you're not even uniting the Sunday resurrection date for for the Lord's sake but when it came to evil deeds and agendas when it came to Satan all church leaders spoke the same language is anyone awake or am I a lunatic I don't know have I lost my mind come on people amazing why church leaders did this they covered the Sun they covered the Sun but the Sun was covered when communism and atheism come came and the church became like them the church became an earthly organization nowadays the church is actually measured upon it upon her success by how many you know properties the church has how many schools how many clubs how many pop sorry how many clubs how many places it has and how many churches it's got but the church never says how many faithfuls we have for the Lord because we are no longer heavenly we are earthly we fell the stars from heaven fell on earth we became worldly people worldly leaders so the church leaders now all their concern is how many millions and billions assets money and liquid we have this is the measure for the church to be successful or not I'm very sad if there is one who is the greatest sinner of all is me don't ever think I'm judging far from it but I am crying out of pain I need help I need the Lord all of us we need the Lord one church leader which I'll leave them unknown said This vaccine is good why because doctors are from God and since doctors are from God well these doctors who are from God made this vaccine therefore this vaccine is good in a way indirectly this vaccine is from God because the doctors are from God who made the vaccine the question is my dear leader with all love and respect what is it only the doctors who are from God or is it everyone else and everything from God isn't it well everyone and everything is from God however doctors are from God very true but are all doctors working for God that's the question <laughs> are all doctors working for God yes of course they are from God but are they for God no 
Someone like Anthony Fauci, is he working for God, for God's sake? Someone like the CEO of the WHO, World Health Organization, is he from God? He is. Is he working for God? No, he's working for these secret societies. The big pharma, the pharmaceuticals, aren't they from God? Yes, but are they working for God? No, they are the biggest mafia. Biggest mafia. Well, don't bring God into the equation with all reverence to the Almighty God. My question is not whether the doctors are from God or not. My question is, where did this vaccine come from? I know where it came from. I'm questioning the authenticity of those and the credentials of those people. Therefore, the vaccine is not from God. It is satanic. It's evil. The people behind it are evil. They follow Satan. And they worship Satan. Satan is their God. Good the luck. Good the luck. And the stars of heaven fell to, to the earth as a fig tree drops the, its late figs when it is shaken by a mighty wind. One thing about a fig tree that is different to any other tree. All trees, they drop their, their fruits before they become ripe. The fig tree is the only tree that drops only the bad, the bad fruits. But when it's good, it actually hangs on to it. No matter what happens, the fig tree will never let go of the good, good fruit. But the bad ones... The moment the wind blows, says, please, wind, take the bad fruits, take it, drop it. The fig tree is loyal to the good fruits, but hates the bad fruits. Get rid of them. So when the wind blew, the mighty wind came, all the bad fruits fell. You know, and the mighty wind, when persecution comes, when hardship comes, the good fruits from the bad fruits will be seen very clearly. Who's going to last and who's going to not last. So all the leaders who are fake are going to drop like the bad fruits of the fig tree. But the good leaders are going to hang on because they are built on the rock, Christ Jesus. No cyclone, no rain, no waves, no nothing will shake and will break them. But the fake ones with a blow of a wind gone, never to be seen. Because they covered, they covered the sun, denied Jesus for mullah khabibi. For money. And money brings fame and power and authority. And then you start walking like... I love the black Americans, but you're going to walk like them, brother. Yes, sir. What's up? What's up? You're going to be cool, brother. Money makes you cool. And then you get barbecued in the next life. Yeah. So you want to be hot here and cool there? Or do you want to be cool here and burning there? Which one? Elon Musk. And all the secret societies you know honestly it's a sick world I can only put it this simplistically and bluntly it's a sick 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 world and when it's a sick world it behaves so childishly so grown-ups act like little kids it's very ugly it's a shameful act for an adult to act like a little kid grow up so the world is acting foolishly, absolute foolishness. Oh, elections are coming, hey? Have I got time? I've kept you for too long. Um, I said I was going to say something about elections. Church never should never interfere with politics or blends in with politics not interfere but blends in with politics it doesn't work there are two parallel lines never meet 
Faith and politics, they don't meet. That is not my intention. I will never, ever let the church to interfere or blend in with politics over my dead body. Never. I'll pray, I'll pray for the politicians, but if somebody comes and says, you know, I, I need votes and I need this, sorry, this is not a place to promote uh, any, um, any groups of people or any party in politics. That is not the church role. But I'll say this, as a citizen now, I'm a bishop, yes, but I am a citizen of this country, and I am proud of Australia. And I consider myself an Australian, even if I don't look it, but as they say, do not judge the book by its cover. Hey, I may look like Mr. Ahmed, I'll blow you up, but inside I am an Aussie baby. So let's put the prawns on the Barbie and let's get a life and let's have some bush takamai. So now I am an Aussie. As an Aussie, I have, I have the right to say that I'm very disappointed in the two main parties that have at different intervals ran this nation and this country and that is the liberal and the labor parties I'm very disappointed in, bo in both of them and I'll say this I will never vote neither for this nor for that one I will never vote for labor li liberal for as long as I live I won't vote for them this country is in a lot of trouble this country is sold in so many ways is sold in so many ways there are some hidden hands that run this country and I don't know whichever party comes on board I don't know what really can they do I'm not sure how much they can do I don't know but I know one thing Jesus Christ will always be the sovereign authority over every nation. And whatever they have been doing and are doing now, at the end, they are fulfilling the plan of Jesus Christ, period. They think they are getting away with murder, but they are fulfilling the plan of the Lord. Because no one surpasses the wisdom of the infinite God, no one. Satan, no matter how wise he can be, he is ignorant and an idiot when it comes to this wisdom of Jesus Christ. He is nothing. He is absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. Zilch. Then how much more people who follow Satan? But I'll say one thing. I pray first and foremost to my Lord and my God Jesus Christ to bring people into power where they have the fear of the Lord, where they have the love of Jesus Christ. We need to see good, moral driven people into the government of this wonderful nation called Australia. We want to see people that are fearing God. I am not just saying that we need to have Christians in there, but whoever comes, whatever backgrounds they are, we want to see my Lord Jesus to have people in power with morals, with values, with ethics. Enough puppets running the show. Enough. And if there is a church leader that is going to indirectly support someone who has shown what kind of an agenda they have and they have been having, for the sake of giving few votes to them, for them to remain in power so that you can get more grants from them, then shame on you. Because you have covered the sun. You have covered and denied Jesus Christ. You've sold your master like Judas Iscariot did. Shame on such leaders. If I was in the position where I've got over a billion people followers, and I am that guy that I have one point something billion behind me. If I don't give one penny, if any politician comes, they can kill me. They can shred me to pieces. I will say the following. Are you here to gain votes? 
Are you here for me to support your evil agenda? If you don't get out of my face, I'll throw you from the balcony where I preach. We want to live in peace. We want to live with dignity. We want to live as human beings. But you know what the problem is? Humans lost touch of this man. We forgot. You know, prior to the pandemic, what were we doing? What kind of places were we going? Were we praying? Or were we cursing? Were we living in the light or in the darkness? Were we going to the church or to the club? Was I with the Lord or with Satan in those dark alleys in the streets? What was I doing? You see, what made this world to fall because the people of this world denied God. Denied God. Church leaders chased after money, fame, prestige, and authority. Thrones. They didn't want to sit on the floor anymore because it's an embarrassment for the Pope, for the Patriarch, for the Bishop to sit on the floor. It's an embarrassment. I must sit in a limousine and I must sit on a throne up high and kiss my hand, you followers. We forgot that the head of the church and the only head of the church, Jesus Christ, sat on a mule to enter Jerusalem to be triumphant. Sat on a mule, not a limousine. And he didn't have two shirts. He didn't even have a dollar in his pocket. That's why he asked for a dollar when they questioned him, shall we give tax to Caesar or not? If he had a dollar in his pocket, he, would have, he wouldn't have asked. The Lord does not make up stories. But he was poor money-wise, yet he is the creator of this world and the next. His treasure never runs out. But in this world, he said, the birds of the sky have a nest to dwell in. The foxes have places to go and sleep. Yet the Son of Man has no place to rest his head on. Yet I am the creator. Everything is mine. But in this world, I lived as a total stranger. And the church wants to be like the world. The church is very powerful. We know so many politicians. We've got so much money. We've got so much power. We've allowed Freemason to infiltrate the church. And the result, the church is locked for the faithful to pray. It is open to be jabbed with the poison. That was the result. The stars fell from heaven on earth. Church leaders became earthly. They became businessmen. <laughs> One guy in America is amazing. He's sitting with another guy like himself. He says, and Jesus told me, brother. They're preachers. And the other guy said, hey, what? What did he tell you? He said, so-and-so, you need to have a private jet. And then I said, why, Lord? Where do you think you are sitting and who you are? Who are you? And I said, why, Lord, do I need a private jet? He said, because you need to carry my gospel to all four corners of the world. You need to fly in comfort. So I got a private jet worth 80 million US dollars. Now this Jesus must be very kind and generous. So Jesus came and said to you, get a private jet, 80 million dollars.
they will put 80 million shish kebabs in you in the next life. Enough of these liars. And millions go to those kind of a churches, mega churches, and they give tithing. To who? To Satan. Not Jesus, to Satan. To liars. To liars. In the name of Jesus, they lie. Don't vote for Labour or Liberal. Vote for someone else. Yeah, whatever. Whichever party you feel like. I like Pauline Hansen in a way. <laughs> Maybe she should be the next Prime Minister. What do you think, guys? The good old Aussie, baby. Hmm. She speaks the truth. She speaks bluntly, straightforward. I like that. You know? Oh, there's also uh, Craig Kelly. Uh, United Australia Party, yeah, there is, there is so many, um, uh, vote for whoever, uh, not, please, not the Labour. Uh, I don't mind whichever party it is, we just want people to have morals and values. We want real men, even if they die, but they stand up for the truth, and they stand up for humanity. Don't be a puppet and don't be a sold out. And the day that comes that you can't be the prime minister anymore, resign with respect and keep your dignity. And come up just like the prime minister, well, who was it, Tony Blair or someone? I don't know, I can't remember in Great Britain. He, when, when they were exiting Brexit, when they were exiting from the European nations, he came and he said, I cannot run this ship I cannot go, uh, take this ship anymore. If you're exiting for the European nations, uh, this is against my way of thinking. I disagree. I think, I believe we should stay. But since it is the, the people's choice, I respect every British citizen, their choices, I respect them. Therefore, I am not the qualified prime minister for this job to exit out of U European nations. Today, I resign officially in front of you with love and respect. Now, this is an act of a real man. For whatever reason, he's doing it. But at least he came out in the, in the public, in the open, and said, I can't do it. I'm not qualified. Find someone that can run the show for you. That's it. So the prime ministers and the presidents of every nation, if you can't run anymore, if you're being, you know, really pushed and forced by hidden agendas, come out and say, look, I'm really sorry. Uh, I, can't, I can't be the prime minister. I'm resigning. And because you may be fearing for your life and your family, you know, because they do get threatened if they don't do what they're told. Resign. Don't stay there and, and act. So please, um, I don't, we don't want any promises anymore. Um, Centerlink uh, will, 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 will raise your pension and will give you more uh, jobs. And please, you go and work for the doll. Leave me alone, right? I don't want your, uh, your pay rise. I don't want nothing. I want someone that I can see a real, true human being, not a machine program. So vote for someone else. I am. Why should I vote for an atheist? You don't believe in my God. Why should I give you my vote? Get out of my sight, man. We need more Christians in, the, in, in, in government bodies. We need more Christians. What are the Christians? Till when are you going to be asleep? So what, you're the Pope or the Bishop or the Patriarch, so what? Be real men. Once in your life, be real men. Love your Lord from the heart. Stop being Judas Iscariot. Stop selling Jesus. Be real men. 
And now we come to the finale. Now we finish. My time is up. What's left? Oh, I'll just read it for you guys. Verse 14. Then the sky receded as a scroll when it is rolled up, and every mountain and the sky receded and was rolled up. When you deny Jesus Christ, heaven detaches itself from earth. You don't have the grace anymore. <laughs> when the grace is lifted, <laughs> show me your power, Mr. Leader. You see, before you thought you were powerful, it was the grace of the Lord that was carrying you. But when the grace leaves, you are nothing. Even if you are the head of the entire church, you're nothing. I'm nothing. When the Lord leaves someone like me, I am nothing. Nothing. I can't stand on my feet anymore. It is the love of Christ. His grace, His mercy is holding me out. I need to come back to the Lord. Then the sky receded as a scroll when it was rolled up. And every mountain, mountain, government leaders, and every island, the capitalist people, money, 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 money. Every mountain government leader and every island capitalist people was moved out of its place. And the kings of the earth, the great men, the rich men, the globalists, all those who have the trillions, the Rothschild and the Rockefeller, all of those who have trillions, the commanders, the army people, the head of the armies, the police force, those who think they have stars here, the mighty men, the great, every slave and every free man hid himself in the caves and in the rocks of the mountains and said to the mountains and rocks, fall on us, hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne, who sits on the throne is God and from the wrath of the Lamb, Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Who sits on the throne, God, and the Lamb, the Son of God, for the great day of His wrath has come and who is able to stand. Those who have done evil till the end, they will lose out on God and on the Lamb of God. On God, His justice, and on the Lamb of God, His mercy. They will miss out on God's justice and God's mercy at the end. And what is left? The wrath of God coming upon them. They, they prefer the mountains and the rocks to fall on them rather than having the wrath of God because it is much more severe and painful than the mountains falling on us and crushing us. This is what they will encounter when they see Jesus Christ in His second coming. No more the lamb, but the lion. No more the priest, but the king. No more that silent, quiet person, but fire devouring before him. They will see him differently. Then they will say to the mountains, fall on us. My goodness, the Lord Jesus is perfect in his timing. And there is a time coming where everyone will know Jesus Christ is God and the one and only. And I pray that time is very soon. I personally, you know, in soccer, when they play and they, equal, like they, they end up equal, either zero or one, one or two, two, they, the, the referee gives them extra time. I am living the extra time. I've had my share in life. My time now is the extra time. The referee could blow the whistle any moment. I can't wait for my referee, Jesus, to blow the whistle and say, come up. Through my mercy and grace, I'm bringing you up. What are we fighting for? What are we making a big deal out of here? What is worth it here, my beloved? The more you dig in this world, you get nothing but mud and filth. Why can't we live in harmony? Why can't we live in peace? Why can't we live in dignity and respect? What has become of you people? Greed has blinded you. Where is that humility? Pride has engulfed you. We need to humble ourselves. What are you fighting for? You secret societies, the big farmers, 
chemotherapy makes a lot of money they can have a cure for cancer but they're not gonna do it why because they have too much greed so give an illness to this human being so they come and we give them a cure which create another illness so they'll be coming to us for the rest of their life we will take every penny out of them and with this money we run governments we buy leaders including church leaders we buy them don't be surprised and shocked if you find there are church leaders who are Freemason to the core do not be shocked let Satan save you so sad so sad but on the other hand, we have Jesus. Amen. I want to dance with the Lord Jesus. Yeah. I want to feel the heat with the Lord Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> Pray, my beloved. listen when we come to Bible preach we're talking about a specific thing this is not it yeah so don't say oh that was a bit harsh that was a bit I don't know what no 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 you need to be happy you need to be happy and you need to know the time is near when you are seeking the Lord then wouldn't you want to be happy to be facing the one you love the most don't you want to be with, your, with the love of your life? So if Jesus Christ is the love of your life, don't you want to be with him? So if, if the nuclear warhead is going to come from China to Australia, well, hallelujah to that, because thank you, Mr. Ting Wing Wang, because I, it's going to take me to my Lord. Well, I can't, I, I forget his name, Zing Wing Jing. I think, I don't know. Whatever. But I'm happy. Because when you love Jesus from the heart, then death is a great gain. It's a great gain. Hallelujah. I'll embrace this death because this death finally is going to take me to meet my love face to face. No more looking through a mirror, through a maze. I'm going to see him face to face. I can't wait for this moment. This world Satan, you can have it. I want my Jesus. And whatever happens, I am grateful. I am happy. I'll say to them, shame on you, but I love you. I say to them, get out of my side, but I'll pray for you. I'll say to them, you can kill me but I'll give you my life if you ask for it because I'm happy I have my my one and only Jesus is my everything I don't want nothing else I don't need no one else I've got my Jesus I'm happy I'm happy I'm happy All right, now we finish. We go straight downtown, brother. Let's go clubbing. Ach, ach. And put the Sabufa Habibi in the back seat. Wah, wah, aduf, aduf. Yes, boys at the back there. No more Sabufa Habibi, no more clubbing, brother. Come to the church, bro, and I'll sing for you. Wah, ah, wah, ah, duf, duf, duf. And that was the end of chapter 6. The fifth and the sixth seal. And we'll continue with the seventh seal in chapter 7. And, um, and the rest of the, the book of Revelation with the Lord's grace. I pray we finish it before the world comes to a conclusion. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine like we're in chapter 22. 
and, and the bride and the spirit both saying, come quickly, come quickly, Jesus. And then Jesus comes. That would be a great finale, man. A great finale. A great finale. And then I'll say to Bill Gates, na, 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 eat your heart out. All right, I just wanted to make you laugh. But seriously, I'll leave you with this. <laughs> my young sons and daughters, my beloved children, all of you, in Christ. Jesus Christ is the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Jesus Christ is amazing in every way, in every form or shape. Jesus Christ is God who was revealed in the flesh over 2,000 years ago. This is the truth. And I put my life on the line for this truth because I not only believe in this truth, I came to know this truth because there is a difference between believing and knowing. Believing is the beginning of the road. Knowing is the end of the road. Through faith, I get to know. I get to discover things that were hidden before. So I not only believe in the Lord, but I know the Lord. I am weak, but I know Him. And I believe in Him. And I know one thing. He never left me. Never will. Young men and women, and those who are watching us through live stream, do not be tempted by what the world is offering you. I beg of you. Do not go to a place where the Lord disapproves of. Do not mix with people that take you away from Christ. Mix with the ones that lead you to Christ. Do not call people who take you to dark alleys friends. Do not call them because they are not. For the definition of a friend is a true friend is the one who builds you up, not destroys you. That is a true friend. I beg you, be close to the church. Be close to the Lord. Be close to His Holy Word, the Holy Bible. Be close to everything that relates to Jesus Christ. Do good deeds. Show a true image of Christ in your life for the rest of the world. Reach out to those who are in need. Feed a homeless person. Think of someone who is going through suffering. Pray for the afflicted. Heal those who are wounded in whichever way you can heal them. Do good deeds in your life. And show love wherever you go. And be humble. Ask your Lord to make you humble. I beg you. I beg you, I beg you, and I beg you, and I will always beg you, always be close to the Lord Jesus. Don't say I am a Catholic. Don't say I am an Orthodox. Don't say I'm a Protestant. Do you love Jesus Christ? This is the number one question you need to ask because Jesus will ask you this in the end like he asked Simon Peter. Simon, son of Jonah, come here. After he rose from the dead, Simon, come here. Do you love me? And this is exactly what the Lord is going to ask everyone. Do you love me? He's not going to say, were you Catholic? Or were you Protestant? Oh, were you Orthodox? Oh, Orthodox. Oh, not bad. <laughs> Do you love me? Do you? This is the question you and I need to answer. You and I need to answer. Let's stand for the finale prayer. Oh, before we stand for the finale prayer, please sit down. I'm going to introduce to you my beloved daughter in Christ, Nora. And I know you've uh, probably put you to sleep. Come on, yes, that's the way. Come on, Nora, let us hear something nice. From your angelic voice.